early RPGs on the PC platform are not often revered as being good by too many people. You have games like Daggerfall and Ultima that get some love sometimes, but ultimately older CRPGs are shrouded by obscurity. This is understandable for many of these games, especially the 3D ones, that have not aged gracefully and are a bit clunky to get into. However, it's worth noting that there are many CRPGs that are still awesome that you never hear about anymore, so let's talk about one. This is Ragnarok, a CRPG roguelike released in 1992 by Norsehelm Productions, and this is one of my favorite DOS games of all time. It is also known by the name Valhalla in Europe, which I have the mighty box for here. There are some key differences between these versions worth noting though. Valhalla includes some repetitive digitized sound effects, a copy protection system, and death. So when you die in Valhalla, you need to restart the entire game, whereas Ragnarok has a save system which is more forgiving. Ragnarok was also developed up until 1995 and adds more content to the game and foregoes the whole permadeath thing, so I would definitely recommend this version. So what kind of game is Ragnarok? I would say it's kind of hard to explain, and while the game is considered to be a traditional roguelike, there are a few things that set it apart from games like NetHack and Rogue. For one, it has high -er resolution 640x480 graphics and mouse support. That may sound trivial, but when you consider most roguelikes back then looked like this, it's more relevant. Personally, I think the graphics are perfect since they give you a general idea of what's going on with enough lack of detail to allow your imagination to fill in the blanks. In addition to the graphics, the game also includes a full storyline, quests, and lore based on Norse mythology. The goal of the game is to finish as many of these quests as possible and let the forces of good triumph over evil in the Great Battle of Ragnarok, which will bring about the end of the world. All very power metal worthy stuff. However, when you're first dumped into Ragnarok, you're probably just worried about surviving since death lurks around every corner. Whether it's a garden gnome or Jormungandr, it probably wants to kill you. You control the game with a keyboard or mouse and can move in eight different directions across an overworld in typical roguelike fashion. The combat is a simple turn-based bump and hit system, but you can also use magic, throw items, and shoot things with wands. Most of the game revolves around exploration, finding new weapons and armor, and battling baddies to become more powerful. The game may seem simple on the surface, but it offers a surprising amount of things to see and do, almost to the point of replicating a tabletop game in terms of choice. For instance, you can experiment by mixing potions which can have good or comically disastrous results. Mixing up a good potion may give you heat vision or telepathy. However, a bad one might kill you instantly, make your legs fall off, or render you dyslexic, which will scramble all the text in the game. Crafting and forging new weapons is also available to the adventurer with the proper skills. You can also write or find scrolls that do random things like send you to alternate dimensions or teleport you to new lands. There is also a morality system, which degrades if you engage in questionable things like cannibalism and will cause some friendly NPCs to attack you if you go over to the dark side. Like Rogue, the world, items, enemies, and locations are procedurally generated each time you play, so no journey through the game will be exactly the same. Items like rings, potions, and scrolls will also have random names each playthrough, so you must experiment or identify them to find out their effects. The world map you explore is massive in size, consisting of forests, underground caves, oceans, temples, wastelands, and shops, and you're unlikely to see all of it the first time you play. The game also boasts over 200 different monsters that can murder and disfigure you in different ways, some interesting ones include a werewolf, which can obviously turn you into a werewolf, leaving you unable to control your actions for a time. There's also a weird fume that can change your gender or make you grow fingers and eyeballs. There's a monster named Calvin, who is a douchebag, who likes to rip out your eyeballs and make you go blind. And then there's a nymph, who can seduce you and steal your items. While all of these enemies you can also run into on a simple trip to your local Walmart, there's so many more in the game that I can't go into detail about in just one video. 
But either way, all these different enemy types really make you think about how you're going to approach each enemy and try to avoid certain ones. At the start of each game, you have the choice of six classes, each with different skills and abilities. There's also a unique mechanic that allows you to switch classes every 10 levels of experience to vary your skills. One of the most unique things about this game is the ability to permanently transform yourself into other creatures in the game. If you manage to obtain a Wand of Polymorph or a Transformation Potion, you can turn yourself into a random creature. It may be a good idea to save first though, since turning yourself into a weak, worthless creature like a rat is always possible, and this brings me to my next point. You may have noticed my relentless praise of this game because, quite frankly, I love it to pieces. It's not without some flaws, though. The biggest issue probably lies in the procedural generation. Sometimes you get very unfortunate RNG with some demigod guarding a low-level area or critical mission items spawning in unreachable spots. The game also has a tendency to spam some creatures in certain areas like these glard things that I ran into this playthrough. There are also some status effects that have some obscure cures that, unless you read the wiki, you likely would have a hard time figuring out. One particular beast in the game has a gaze that will turn you into stone in a few turns unless you eat a clay lump. Who knew chowing down on some Play-Doh had a practical use? Yeah, I don't get it either, and I'm not sure how you're supposed to know that. For these reasons, though, I would recommend save scumming when you can, even though the game will only allow you to save every few hundred turns. These minor issues aside, I really think Ragnarok is one of the most underappreciated DOS games that exists. In fact, the only other traditional roguelike RPG I enjoy as much as this game is Caves of Cud, which was released over 20 years later. So if you're a fan of traditional roguelikes at all, you're really doing yourself a disservice by not giving this game a whirl. Like most games of this type, you may never actually explore the entire game or even complete it. However, if you're like me, the unseen mystery will keep you coming back to this game every so often and becoming immersed in its deceptively complex world. So that's the end of this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like DOS games and retro stuff, I think you've stumbled on the right side of YouTube. So give me a sub if you want to see more. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time.